Hello and welcome to Mallbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 86. You could probably notice that my surroundings have changed a little bit from my uh, my previous reviews. Um, and as I mentioned on Twitter, I'm having to relocate upstairs temporarily because we're on some building work done in the basement. Um, so the next few reviews you'll be seeing this setting. So it's not quite as well set up as downstairs or whiskey behind me. I've just brought a few key bottles up uh, that, I'm, that I'm drinking at the minute. Um, but here we are. So yeah, whiskey review number 86. Um, if you saw what I put out on Twitter uh, last week, I said that I would be opening something uh, and uh, opening the floor up to a bit of discussion. Uh, stuff like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comments, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's all about discussion. So, that bottle I'm opening, I'm actually quite excited about this, is this. Long Row Red 13 year old. Chilean Sauvignon, Cabernet Sauvignon cask, sorry, I know it's a Sauvignon block, I need to get my Sauvignons in the right, uh, the right order. So, this is as new to you as it is to me. I've only got one bottle of this, and this is sort of partially what I wanted to talk about as well, as things go on. So, there it is, closed, never opened before. Um, I do have another bottle of the previous release that I haven't got around to yet, but I thought it was quite timely to try and open this one and, and see what was what and have a bit of a chat. So, without further ado, and this probably plays into quite a few people's hands, me doing this actually, which is kind of why I wanted to do it as well, just to prove a point. So I can be quite obstinate, to be honest. There it is. So, Lovely pinkish hue in there. This light isn't ideal. I'm I am trying my best, but that is a really nice pinkish hue, and you can see that that red wine, partial red wine maturation, has played a big part. Bottled at fifty one point six percent. There you go. I'll just do that again. There you go. Nice close for the label. Fifty one point six percent. Distilled at Springbank Distillery, so it is long grow. Longro is Springbank's heavily peated run whiskies. So at, Lo at uh, Springbank you get Hazelburn, which is their triple distilled offering. Uh, it's also very slightly peated or often unpeated. Springbank, which is your kind of core middle of the road in terms of peat. And then you've got Longro, which is big beasty peaty flavor. So Longro Red. Alright, Long Row Red is something that Springbank slash Long Row etc uh, release uh, yearly and uh, this is this year's release so I only picked this up last month um, so all the one month before what we in now, March, I picked it up January, February, I can't bloody really remember now um, but basically um, I picked this up for retail price which was £62 very limited number of bottles, I think it's limited to about 5,000 bottles, which sounds like quite a lot, but it's a very short after release. Um, right, this is going really well. Um, my cat's just decided to have a bit of a scrap and started eating loads of food and just tapping the cat flap and uh, just nightmare, absolute nightmare. I cannot work under these conditions. So anyway, where was it? Yeah, long row. Um, is, a, is an annual limited release, about 5,000 bottles a year. Uh, you know, it's a very small, very small release, very sought after, because it's very good quality. Springman don't produce shit whiskey, do they? I mean, realistically, no distillery does. They don't go out of their way to produce anything bad. It's just people's tastes are different. And we all have different expectations, etc. That's a story for another day. So, the Long Row 13, Cabernet, Sauvignon cask, right? I picked this up in January, February, can't remember which, whenever it was released anyway, retail price of 62 quid. Okay. They sold out literally, and I'm not I'm not joking. I think Royal Mile Whiskey's posted something on Twitter about it being in stock at about nine o'clock. Um I clicked it. Like within about what forty seconds, you know, you know where Twitter doesn't even say a minute yet. It says like posted forty three seconds ago, or whatever. Clicked on it, 
page loaded, I'm at work, so I'm on Chrome, I'm really good connection, boom, gone, sold out, gone, boo, see you later. Master Remote, similar story, within seconds, gone. Whiskey Exchange, gone. You know, I mean, Abbey Whiskey, gone. You name it, it went, and it always does, it always goes very quick. Pretty sure I'm rambling a little bit so far, so what I'm going to do. Shall we see what's like on the nose first? Now, a, bit, a little bit of time, bit of time to breathe, haven't it? Ooh. I mean, really nice tears as well there. As you can see, so on the nose, Rhubarb, blackberries, a lot of peat, a lot of smoke, mossy, it's a bit of vanilla maybe, some sort of nuttiness there, a hell of a lot of oak, quite dry. I mean for me that, that rhubarb and custard thing is quite strong, it is, it's quite strong, very pleasant as well, really really nice. I mean, it's, it's just shy of 52%, 51.6. And honestly, it's not prickly. It's it's not overpowering. It's lovely, lovely, lovely nose. So, the the entire maturation was not in these red wine casts, right? So, prior to being finished in these, these wine casts for, I think, Three years, is it certainly? Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. Right, okay. So it's 13 year old whiskey. Mature for 10 years in a mixture of bourbon and refilled sherry hogsheads, followed by three years in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels from Mont Gras Intriga Estate in Alto Maipo. I'm so sorry if my pronunciation is bad. I mean, I've not been to Chile before. Uh, I've eaten it, but. Located at the foot of the Andes in Chile, and I stand corrected here, only 9,000 bottles of cast strength have been bottled. So, there you go. Hopefully you can see that again. I appreciate the light, it's pretty poor. 9,000 bottles. So, there's a lot of whiskey buffs out there, a lot of whiskey geeks like me that like to drink this stuff. To reiterate, drink this stuff. And there's also quite a few people out there that might like to drink it occasionally, but also like to make a bit of money. Oh, the berry, berry flavours in there. Damn, they're getting strong. I mean, I'm a northern lad, so I don't drink Ribena. I drink Vimto. And that is Vimto in a glass. Fit. Hmm. Grapiness, there's like that. Again, that blackberry, black currant, maybe some raspberry in there. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. And all the while, you've got that lovely underlying note of peat in there. Really nice, strong smoke. So, what was I saying? There's also some people that like to make a bit of money on the side. Now, you know, it's 2020. Capitalism reigns supreme. There's nothing wrong with making a bit of money. I mean, that's why we all go to work, right? And that's what enables me to buy all these whiskies. I mean, not not just those, but the ones that I used to have behind me downstairs. Oh, I'm going to have to get used to that. Um, and I mean, there's a bit, of, there's, a, there's a phrase floating around at the minute for, for people that basically purchase bottles like this, including this bottle, because you do see these on auction sites pretty quickly. I guarantee the next Scotch whisky auction is in about, as of recording today, is in about, I think, 15, 16 days, look on it, there'll be a bottle of that, there'll be loads of bottles of that. Same with when the, the previous uh, release, the 11 year old Pinot Noir, was released. Yeah, it was on there, pretty much straight away, you know. First first auction came around, boom, gone, on there. And it's people flipping this stuff, so it costs £62, right, retail. And people usually make, I think from the ones I've seen recently, I mean, they've only made like, you know, they go for 75, 80 quid at auction, some of these. Some go for 100, some go for more, depending on how old the release is and, you know, 
how many previous releases back it was and how popular it was. So there's people trying to make money. You could just see it. It's like, you know, why else would you send it to an auction website? It's only got released like two months ago. You're there to make money. And you're, by doing that, in my opinion, depriving somebody of the ability to drink that that was there at the, the point of try to click add to basket frantically like a madman. Um, I'm just there all like, oh, come on. And it wouldn't do it because it was sold out. And each to their own. There are people out there that collect whiskey and don't drink it. They like to look at it like freaky antiques. I've always bought it to drink. That's just who I am. That's what I like. And that's what I see value in. I see value in the experience of whiskey. I see the value in its creation for that purpose. Other people see value as investment value. Monetary value, pound signs, dollar signs, euro signs, whatever it is. I want to say that's fine, and it is to the individual level. To me, I disagree with it because I don't do it, but others do. So I think for me, that's kind of what I wanted to open up the floor to. I am not slating people that do that. That's, that's your decision. In my opinion, it does take away from A, the experience. You'll be excited at the fact you make, might make a profit off it. And that's going to go in your back pocket, but ultimately you're also depriving somebody else of the experience and, and the joy, arguably, and the excitement of actually being able to experience that whiskey. Because it isn't just a drink, it is not just a case of, yeah, that tastes nice, it's an entire sensory experience. So, with that in mind, on the palate, oh. Wow, okay. Punchy, easily drinkable at 51.6 if I'm honest. Uh, with a cast strength whiskey, I would usually add water. I'm not going to today because I appreciate I've rambled quite a lot and I've opened the floor, the floor up to, to this discussion and I keep doing little bits in between. I keep trying to stop cats from fighting and eating things. And there's one, I mean, there's one here and I do not trust it. Don't trust the cat. Yeah, I'm looking at you. That rhubarb custard that I mentioned from the from the nose, straight away, bam, like a little rhubarb -y pocket in your mouth that just explodes. And there's that vanilla with the custard, yada yada yada, there's a lovely nuttiness, and it's very, very tannin lead. It's nice and drying in sort of like a nice oaky bitter finish at the end. It's still very warming, very sweet. There's some of that black sort of like forest berry fruit that I was talking about before, so thinking like blackberry and raspberry, maybe a bit of cranberry possibly. There's undoubtedly that wine influence there. I mean, it's been in these bleed casts for three years. Of course it's going to impart some, some flavour. I mean, look at the colour. It's pink. It's pink whiskey. What do you think you're going to get? Hence the name. Um, so, the smoke there, alright, there is smoke. It's a peated whiskey. It's quite heavily peated whiskey. But it's really tempered down on the palate, the smoke, I feel, by that sweet note, by that kind of like almost sort of like pleasingly sour and tart rhubarb, and that lovely creamy vanilla custard note as well. It's not a peat bomb, it's not a smokestack or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's very refined. It really is, it's incredibly well refined. Um, and I think it goes to show how dynamic Springbank is as a distillery, how switched on they are to cask finishing and maturation, how they look after their stocks. And it's, it's no wonder they've got so many cool followers. It's a phenomenal distillery, because they make phenomenal whiskey. And this is a prime example of it. £62 something at the time. I've opened it now, so that's one less bottle. So we're down from 9000 already. We're down to 8999 So, again, what I was saying before, playing in someone's hands. Some people are going like, literally, there will be people thinking, like, happy days, mine's gone up in value, because that's one down. I mean, you only need to look at the new Ardbeg release. I mean, the, the committee releases get mental, more and more mental every year. And this year, the Ardbeg Black, Black, how do you say it? Black, I don't know, there's too many A's in there for my liking. It was, it was mental. 
it, it, honestly, it, so it sold out within seconds. Arpeg's, Arpeg's website was an absolute car crash, as usual, and no one could get it. And then within half an hour, certain websites, which shall remain nameless, but I will put them on Twitter because I was in conversations with, with them as well, but they will remain nameless on this, web, on this, this review. Uh, within 30 minutes, had them up on the website for £299. Now, it cost a fraction of that. It didn't cost £299 to buy. The Arbeg commit release is usually about 100 quid. So, you know, go figure. It's just profiteering. It's absolutely shambolic. <sighs> Sorry. Breathe. Breathe. <sighs> so, that's the whiskey. The finish. Again, lovely, long, drying, sweet. Oh my god, you are so annoying. You are both really annoying. Love you though. So, it's very, very well put together, very well structured. Uh, I was shouting at the cats, by the way. Not my children, don't have kids. Uh, two cats, wife, that'll do for me. Um, is it worth the money for me? Yeah, hell yeah, it's worth the money. It was worth the 62 quid. Would I pay 120? At auction next month? What a balls. No, I'm not going to pay 120 quid for something that sold for 62 quid two months ago. I am willing to let things go. You might not be able to sell that at this point, but I am willing to let bottles go. If I don't see the value in there for me for the experience compared to the cost, I won't purchase it. I just won't. I'm not, I'm not the type of person that will go out and land 200 quid on a bottle of whiskey. Fortunately, arguably, depending on who you ask, my bank manager or my wife, probably not. I do have the means to do that, fortunately. I'm in a position where I can do that, but I choose not to because I see the value compared to the spirit, compared to the experience. That's what I put into it. But again, there are people out there that will be buying this and they will buy next year's release and they'll buy the one after that and the one after that. They might get some from different websites and they'll have one to drink and three to flog. And they'll make a fair buck and that's what you're into. That's fine. But for me, I'm into this. So I'm going to have one last round, see if I can pick out anything else. Maybe a little bit of golden syrup in there. But really, for me, that, that red fruit and that rhubarb are dominant. And there's a lovely, lovely smoke in the background. Maybe a little bit of burnt toast, arguably, so you've got all that sort of like, maybe jam or something, like preserve on some burnt toast, which doesn't sound pleasant, but you know, toast is toast. Sorry, I'm just laughing at my wife who intercepted a cat then. It's going really well, this. The palate, incredibly creamy going back to it. Wow, that's really opened up again. Just a mouthfeel, phenomenal. Texture, phenomenal. Creamy, rhubarb smoky, red berry explosion. And this really, really lovely, soft, supple, fruity finish. That, guys, is a lovely, lovely whiskey. It really, really is, not it? And again, it's a testament to the guys at Springbank, uh, the distillers and all of the staff there for putting these releases together because they really do work very well. Red wine finishes and red wine cast maturations can be a bit hit and miss, but this, as with a couple of their other releases, goes to show that they can be well balanced, they don't have to be overpowering, and they provide great value for money in the primary market, maybe not in the secondary market. Depends how you see it. Depends how much you're willing to spend. So, on that note, I'm going to give the Long Row Red 13 an 8 out of 10. It is a fantastic whiskey. Really, really is. I keep picking it up because I want to go back to it. I will be pouring myself another one after this. Um, really glad that I opened it. I am, genuinely, I am really, really glad that I opened it. And again, for me, it's, it's going back to that experience. I'm very, very fortunate to have picked this up. Um, I, I got a tip from someone after I missed out on a couple of websites. Um, so shout out to that person, you know who you are, you directed me to the website that had one of these left in stock, so thank you. Um, and I will be doing the same for anybody who is in need where I see something that you want as well, if I happen to pick you up on Twitter. So, eight out of 10. 
Thanks very much for watching. Please do feel free to click that subscribe button. I'm not going to beg, but if you do like my rambling or you disagree with my views or you whatever and you just want to give me grief, subscribe and crack on. Um, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section of YouTube. Let's open this discussion up. And also I'm on Twitter and my handle is at Maltbox and I'm also on Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.